Alderman Burnett are excused. And thank you, Alderman Stoyer, for sitting in today. You're Always a pleasure gracing us with your presence. Gracing? Okay. Right. I'll accept that. Can I have an approval of the agenda? Second. 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 By one second. Yep. We'll save us time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need somebody to do something for the camera while we're waiting. Can you see where? On the vote, we got to wait on the call. December 18th. This is. Yeah. I thought we're in the, uh, uh, I know we're in the pool that's being looked at now. I was, I was oh. holding it. We can do a roll call now. Oh, okay. Well, we'll notice. Uh, we'll note uh, Alderman Johnson, Alderman Weary are present. Alderman Burnett, Alderman Nicholson are excused, and Alderman Stoyer is graciously sitting in to give us a quorum. Okay. And approval of the agenda. So moved. Moved by, moved by Alderman Johnson, second Sorry. by Alderman Stoyer. Any changes? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. Johnson, second by Alderman Stoyer. Changes? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> and on to uh, regular order of business, item one. All right, number one is discussion with possible action on the request by the Pickleball League to fundraise for new pickleball courts. I just like saying that. I say it again. Request by the Pickleball League to fundraise for new pickleball courts at Edison Park. It's it's like little things. <laughs> it's the little things. That Actually, it sounds good. <laughs> Anybody here for this item? You just want to come forward. For for public discussion. I'm motion by Alderman that. Johnson, second by Alderman Stoyer to open the floor. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Just need your name and address, please. Bob Fry, 1887 Little Valley Court in Depier. Thank you. Okay. What can you tell us about it? Well, you? Let me kind of kick it off. For oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, well. As soon as I get these TV. Here. All right, so pickleball was introduced to Green Bay about 15 years ago. At the time, uh, they played on existing tennis courts, and all that we did was we striped the pickleball lines over the existing tennis court lines. And then in 2010, uh, the Green Bay Pickleball League started playing at Edison Park. Uh, at the time, and currently, there are four existing tennis courts located uh, at the park, and I did provide a map showing where those are. And what we ended up doing at the time was painting four pickleball courts over two of the existing tennis courts. And then we purchased four portable pickleball nets that they set up and take down whenever they play out there. Uh, and at the time, uh, that was an adequate setup, uh, but over the, over the past few years, the league has grown. And they're a very active group. And for several years, they've been requesting that we actually formally remove two of the tennis courts and replace them as six dedicated pickleball courts. Uh, and the group is here, so Bob is here to give a brief presentation uh, about what pickleball is and talk about what they'd like to do. And they are willing to uh, fundraise a portion of the installation cost if we move ahead with the project. So we'll let Bob kind of kick it off here and we'll go from there. Okay, thank you very much, Dan. If you were to go home tonight and Google the word pickleball, you would undoubtedly come up with many articles that would talk about pickleball as the America's fastest growing sport. And what I would like to do over the next just couple of minutes is to give you enough information so that you would consider the possibility of funding dedicated pickleball courts in the Green Bay area. As, as Dan said, yeah, pickleball in Green Bay began a little over 12 years ago and at that time we had about four to five individuals playing once or twice a week. 
uh, at, at one site, which was Edison. And you usually typically play with four if you play double. So we were very happy we had five. Uh, as you can see, about five years ago, Packerland Pickleball players started in the Green Bay area and it's now expanded to over 40 to 75 players playing daily outdoors at parks in the Green Bay area, Alloway, Ashwabana, and Howard Swamico. If you were to look at summertime right now, on an average weekly basis, we have 50 scheduled times to play. So averaging seven times a, a day to play, whether it be at Howard Swamico, whether it be at Fort Howard, whether it be at Edison, whether it be at you know, one of the Ys and the like. Um, the largest growth in playtime has occurred over the last year in the Ashwaubenon area where we have six dedicated pickleball courts. And right now we have over 300 players in the Packerland Pickleball group. This is a simple graph that shows you a seven day a week in the volume of players that play on any given day at the three different parks. So you can see we have a range of 40 to 70 players on any, any given day playing pickleball in the Green Bay area. Why is it happening? It can be played by people of all ages, genders, male, female, skill levels, from social type play to highly competitive tournament play. Uh, we schedule our play times to encourage players to congregate at the courts. So we have schedules at each of these parks that say what day, what level, what time uh, that they're actually playing. So you can go to a particular court if you're a, a beginner and play with beginner plays. If you want to play with only women, you can go to play with a beginner group of women. If you want to play with advanced men, advanced mixed players, you can go to the same, a, a different park uh, and, and, and participate in those same activities. We organize tournaments uh, as well in the Green Bay area. Usually on an annual basis, we've been running about nine or 10 indoor and outdoor tournaments. And all of our tournaments have been filled to the maximum. We simply max out and cap. We, we don't have enough courts to, uh, in one particular site to, to expand beyond that. And our flexible schedules provide time for working and non-working players as well. So who's and why are playing? Individuals of all ages. Right now, if you look at the people that are playing in our community, we have people that are 25 or younger, as well as 80-year-olds playing pickleball in, in town. The average age is about 55. This past year, we did a, a group called Pickleball 101, which was an intro to pickleball, teaching people the skills. And it turned out most of these people really didn't have a particular interest in playing the highly competitive game, but they wanted the exercise, the social aspect of it. They wanted to get out and meet people and just have fun. And that group now has grown to over 40 adults playing Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in the, in the in, uh, in indoors. In the summer, we had them Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday playing outdoors. So we're getting a lot of people. We've also seen a radical decline in the number of tennis players on all courts. We've been playing at Edison, as I mentioned, for about 12 years. And the number of people that we see playing tennis at any given time, because we're there virtually all the time in the evening and late afternoon, is, is virtually non-existent. People come for maybe 15, 20 minutes, bang balls around, never really play competitively. So we're seeing that population move into the population that's now be beginning to play pickleball a little bit more. So dedicated uh, courts are underutilized, de excuse me, dedicated tennis courts are underutilized and now being used as pickleball courts with our portable pickleball nets as well. Another thing that has begun to push pickleball a little bit more attractive is that pickleball is part of many schools' physical education program. And as an example, at Edison Medical School, middle, middle school, middle school, excuse me, they have uh, that as part of their program. And some of those youngsters are coming out not but with us, but with their teachers and learning the game as well. And as I said earlier, our, pick, our current pickleball schedules encourage players to come to designated times and not requiring to get two or three other people to play with them like tennis. They come and we have 10, 15, 20 people there. If you were to walk into an Edison court, uh, oftentimes in the summertime, in the evening, we'll have seven pickleball courts going uh, in the evening. So Packle and Pickleball Players' mission is to work aggressively with the Green Bay Park and Recreation Department and surrounding communities to establish dedicated pickleball courts and revenue producing programs by creating playing schedules to attract recreational and competitive players through tournaments, hosting clinics for new learners, which, we ch which the park departments can charge for, uh, both for new learners and experienced players, promoting tournaments that attract players from, we had it from Michigan, Minnesota, Illinois, Wisconsin, and, and the surrounding area, and attracting sponsors. We've been able to get sponsors to some of our tournaments to uh, donate paddles, to donate balls, to donate t-shirts that are pickleball vendors. Our goal is obviously developing a partnership with our PPP group and all of its volunteers to work aggressively with the park department to raise money for new courts and our resurfacing existing tennis courts. And as we look at the existing tennis court right now at, that we play primarily at, at Edison, 
uh, in the Green Bay area, it is in need of attention. There, there are some bubbles on it, there are some holes on it. Uh, it's well utilized by us and obviously well utilized by the, the school there, Edison Mills School. And so rather than going in and maybe recreating a tennis court, is there an opportunity to re re recreate courts that would be more highly utilized for both pickleball and possibly tennis? And PPP will continue to offer clinics, create playing schedules that, and host tournaments to attract new and maintain players of all ages and all skill levels. So our proposal to the, my ears are getting weak now, proposal to the Green Bay Park and Rec Department uh, that we're requesting six dedicated pickleball courts be established on the south end of Edison Park tennis courts while, re while lining two tennis courts on the north end with four pickleball courts. So we in essence would have the availability of 10 courts which would attract a lot of people but would also attract a lot more folks for tournaments that do generate revenue for the, for the, uh, the, uh, the department. The location there at Edison provides a safety net for pickleball players while baseball is occurring. So right now we play a lot on, on both ends. Uh, if, if any of you have gone to a baseball game, you know, frequently they'll say heads up, meaning a foul ball is coming to you. It's the worst thing you can do at, at that park because we're right adjacent to the foul poles, the first baseline, so you'll heads up and typically that ball is going to come right down on your head. So heads up literally means heads down. So by switching <coughs> the ends and having most of the pickleball occur on the south end, we're far away from the, those courts and still have the ability with a tournament, which is typically on a weekend, when we are not playing uh, baseball, we have the ability to have possibly 10 courts. The, that location has a deal because it has wind barriers from its setting, whether it's trees and setting down low on the ground. Wind is a factor with pickleball because it's a light ball. Uh, this setting is absolutely perfect uh, for pickleball. And the location really enables at us in middle school the opportunity to continue to use the courts for tennis and other activities uh, as pickleball is primarily played during non-school times and, uh, and, uh, and hours. And our outdoor pickleball time is primarily June through October, which is when school is not in session. If you look, this is kind of the, the orientation. The top is the, the south, so you'd see six pickleball courts on the top. You'd have the two tennis courts uh, still on the bottom. And within those two tennis courts, which is in essence what we have right now, you'd see, uh, you'd see four more lined pickleball courts. The nice thing about that is that is a very wide area. Ten pickleball courts are smaller than tennis courts, so it still allows a 10-foot cushion between the, f uh, the fences that are on the outside as well as between the pickleball courts. So there really is no danger of running into each other. So our group, Packerland Pickleball Players, has, will, will have, has pledged $10,000 to cover a portion of the cost of the court design. We'll continue to assist the park department by helping, write, uh, helping to write and solicit grant money to assist in funding uh, the pickleball course, as well as in creating revenue producing opportunities through its volunteer group by hosting clinics, tournaments, and the like. As an example, the clinics that we, the tournaments that we run each summer generate about $2,200 uh, back into the, the, uh, the park department. But the park department then supplies us with the balls and supplies us with the nets. So it, it's around a $2,000 net gain as well. So that's pickleball in Green Bay. It is definitely a very fast moving, a very exciting sport. We'd love to have you come out there sometime to show you it and uh, get you to play it. And uh, we really hope that you'd consider the opportunity to let us move forward and create some dedicated courts in the community. Any questions? Questions, Helen Stoyer. Thank you, thank you Bob for coming in. Thank um, you. First of all, I think a video would be helpful too. Okay. I'm an actual Okay. Just to see it, just for myself and okay. maybe for a few others. Yeah, if you I, go to YouTube and we just Google pickleball. No, that's true. Yeah. But I'm just saying for your presentation. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> are you already watching it? <laughs> I, I, I know that too. I, uh, I, I've never seen yeah, pickleball. I've seen, I once seen you watch it, it you're going to get hooked. So you're going to want to well, go and play it. Well, right. But I'm just saying for okay. future reference for yourself. Sure. Um, so, I, I, don't, I don't know, Dan, if we'd be talking to you, but I, I guess I'm looking at what the costs are mm -hmm. that you're looking at. I mean, did you mention yep, this? I, I went and looked at that uh, as far as what it would cost to do what, so what I don't know. he's recommending. And the total cost would be about $50,000 uh, to convert two of the tennis courts to six permanent dedicated pickleball courts and then to uh, modify the other two courts to restripe them. So of the $50,000, uh, $30,000 of that is just the cost to recolor coat the entire four courts. Uh, you typically, uh, if you want premier courts, uh, you would want to recolor coat a tennis court about every five to six years. The last time we color coated Edison was in 2010, so it is getting past the time. Parks Department usually does it every 10 years or so. Uh, so that cost is inherent with 
maintaining a tennis court anyway. So we're just about due to recolor code it anyway, which is about 30,000 of that $50,000 cost. Uh, the remaining $20,000 is the cost to remo remove the posts and the nets for the two tennis courts and then install um, posts and nets for six new permanent courts uh, within the, those two courts. And then we also would have to put up a little bit of fencing in between the six dedicated courts because what you don't want are the balls to kind of go between the courts. So you'd want to just put up a little bit of fencing uh, halfway between the six courts. And let me show you that slide here so you know what I'm talking about. Um, so you can see the six courts, how there's a line through the middle. Uh, we would install just a, a short, you know, maybe five foot tall fence there with a gate. Uh, just to prevent the balls from going between court and court. And there already is a fence in between the four tennis courts. So that second line that's drawn in there between the tennis courts and the six pickleball courts, that fence is already there. As, as well as the exterior the fence around the whole <coughs> thing. So we're talking about $50,000. Uh, the group is, is, um, is offering to donate about $10,000 either fundraise or donate and, mm -hmm. um, towards the cost. So the city does not have the remaining $40,000 dedicated right now. Uh, so what we would have to do as part of the motion, if you want to proceed with it, is to officially uh, grant them permission to fundraise uh, and then consider funding it through the bond cycle in the spring of 2019 when you're looking over the entire park department bonding. Any other questions? Um, I'm going to start. I'll hold off for now. Okay. Do you have know. anything right now? I'm okay. good. I'm wondering, do you, do you play pickleball at all at the Howard Y? I have, yes. Okay. Yeah. Son and I were playing basketball last night, yeah. and there's like a little middle room. Yeah. see people in there with big... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. <laughs> yeah, they have three sites. They have three different yeah. gyms at the Howard Y that they play pickleball in. Uh, that there. must be what was happening. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess I just had one question. Um, and Bobby could say there too. You said you were going to raise like possibly ten thousand. Are you saying that some of the money, Dan, is already in the budget, or you said we have to bond for it? The total project is fifty thousand dollars. The parks does not have any um, matching money right now, so we would have to bond forty thousand in the spring. But you'd have to bond regardless, correct? If you want to at redo some, the court, in order to keep the tennis courts playable about every 10 years we recolor code our tennis courts. So they're due. So, so that these being are said, just about due for it. Do it. It's just a matter of a different use. But how do you fund that though when you usually do that? Is that it's do you usually bonding. bond for maintenance? Bond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't use levy dollars for maintenance? We no our budgets are always so tight usually that's just staffing and, and benefits and you have a little bit in there for maintenance and you know, these type of dollars, you know, we have, I, I don't remember the number, but we probably have 30 courts throughout the city. Uh, and at, you know, every two courts is about $15,000. So you'd have to really increase your budget on a yearly basis to just maintain <coughs> that. So in the past, uh, it has never been funded through the budget. Not to say it can't, uh, because it only lasts about 10 years before you have to redo it, and usually the bond is a 20-year cycle. So okay. it's just there's never been enough money in the budget to handle it previously that way. Well, it seems like, you know, pickleball is, you know, like I said, it's a, a growing sport in the area. I know we've had cricket leagues now. We have more soccer. I mean, it just seems like there's other sports that are coming into play, and I, I think one of my concerns would be that and I'm sure you're looking at that the Park Department would look at all these various new sports that are out there and look at ways of incorporating them into the yeah, parks. And, and, and this and seems like one of those ways. The Parks Department is supportive of this request. They've been a great lead to work with. Their numbers are growing. They love it at Edison. And this is a cheaper way to do it than to build dedicated courts somewhere else. And the nice thing is in this facility, we would still end up with two tennis courts that the school can use as tennis courts, plus they get six pickleball courts. So it works well in this location because there's four tennis courts there. Um, 
So any other locations possibly throughout the city that you might look at this, but not, not at this time? Just well, the group, uh, the group really likes to play here. There's adequate parking. There's a nice ADA compliant walk going down there that we installed about two years ago. And what they like about it is it's protected from the wind because it's down a hill. And so there's other locations. There's other locations throughout the city where we've actually striped tennis courts and striped a pickleball uh, court over the tennis court. And those aren't, I mean, they're adequate, you can play there, but it's not ideal, and you can't do a tournament unless you have multiple courts. So they're looking for a tournament facility. Any other questions? I'm good right now. These, I, I just want to maybe be clear. I mean, when you create a pickleball court, it can still be used for tennis? Yeah, yeah because the, the, uh, there's a tennis court lines on it and pickleball court yeah. lines on it. And as is, is Dan had that one picture on the courts on the north end, they, they are tennis courts with line pickleball courts. The tennis net is the barrier. We put portable nets up. So one tennis court equates to two pickleball courts. Right, okay. Yep. So, so yeah, you can still play tennis on those courts. If you, if you want to keep the tennis courts, you can buy portable nets and fit four pickleball courts in addition to the tennis. So when you want to play pickleball, you bring the portable nets and set them up. Uh, when the nets are gone, you can just play tennis. Uh, so with the two tennis courts, that's what they'd like to do is keep the possibility for four there, but then actually physically remove the other two tennis court nets mm -hmm. and create six dedicated courts where it's only pickleball. So I guess that um, was because my one question. thing one yeah. thing when you have the multiple um, markings for the tennis and the pickleball there's a lot of lines. And if you look at that map that I gave you, you can see all of the lines in the two tennis courts where it shows the four pickleball courts and the two tennis courts. It's a lot of lines and it's it's somewhat confusing it's busy. to keep track busy. of which is the tennis court line and which is the pickleball court line. Uh, so what they're proposing is 10 total pickleball courts with four of those courts being portable and tennis courts when they're not being used. I hope I explained that well. Anything else, gentlemen? Nothing to do. That's, that's, that's all we have, unless you had any last. No. Nope. Okay. I appreciate you taking sure. the time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to close the floor. Thank Motion to close the floor by Alderman Sawyer, second by Alderman Johnson. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. What are your wishes, gentlemen? Uh, Alderman Johnson. Dan, just a, a question, yeah. and, and maybe you'll have an answer for this, but is, are 20 year bonds the only thing that we do? We occasionally do other ones, uh, like for example, the, the Sand Beach uh, and Pier project at Bay Beach. We did a, it was less, I think it was like a between a 10 to 15 year bond. Uh, the Zip and Pippin was a 10 year bond, so we can do less, yes. I'm just but having a hard time wrapping my brain around why we're, we're taking out 20 year loans on things that have a 10 year lifespan and paying interest mm -hmm. for 20 years. And, and you know, and I know we do that with vehicles and we do that with other equipment too, and it just, and maybe it's more of a question for finance committee, but again, I'm just, I'm having a real hard time with that mm -hmm. because we're, we're just, uh, I mean, I'm supportive of obviously making investment in, in our community, but, uh, and, and maybe this is a conversation I will bring to Finance Committee, but I think, again, the practice of taking out, I mean, long-term bonds to pay for short-term maintenance issues, uh, it just feels like an upside-down upside down practice to me. Yeah, and that would be a question for the Finance Committee at bonding time and see if there's another way to approach it. So if something happens, will we approve it today? I mean, it's more or less to give them the ability to fundraise at this time? It's giving them the ability to fundraise $10,000, knowing, and your motion would be showing them that the, the, the Park Committee and City Council is supportive of their fundraising efforts. So are they looking to install these next year? Ideally, yeah, but if, if it waits a year, I mean, it really comes down to it. We can't install it until the full funding is in place, so. But ideally, they would fundraise now and we would bond for it in the spring. But again, you can't approve the funding at today's meeting. Uh, that right. would have to be done in the spring. All you can do is approve considering funding it in the spring. Another request like this have come forward from neighborhood associations or, or whatnot, where we've done kind of matching, you know, matching 
uh, fundraising efforts here. I mean, here we're looking at $10,000 to a $50,000 mm -hmm. initiative. How does that line up with other requests that have come forward? You know, that's about a 20% donation, which I think is right in line with what we've done with other um, projects. So, very close. Each one's a little bit differently. Everyone, each one's a little different. And it's a kind of a case by case basis. Okay. Well, I think, well, you know, the thing that I would just hate to see is what happened with Colburn, right? Where, where you say, yeah, we're supportive of this, go fundraise. And then, and then you don't support it through the bonding process. And then, I mean, we're sitting here with egg on our face. So while we might just be saying, yes, go fundraise, I think it's important as a committee and ultimately a council that we look at this and say, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of committing to the project. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, because I think it's just bad practice to, you know, to get people out there raising dollars and then to kind of turn your back on them. And one other approach could be um, just to receive and place this on file for now until after the bond request in the spring and if it gets funded then we give them the approval to fundraise at that point. It may delay the project a little bit more um, but that would be another approach that you could take. Hmm. I'm sure they'd like to fundraise now if possible. If he's not here, did he leave? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you realize <laughs> that. Why? <there>. Discussion. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and when you're fundraising, obviously you'd like to have that in hand the that the city's going to back you if you fundraise it. But, right. but it's like any capital campaign, right? You do a silent campaign first. Yeah. And to me, the silent campaign is getting the city to commit. And, and, and we can do that through the bond process, right? And okay. if we make that commitment, I would think it's going to make their fundraising efforts that much more easier. I was going to ask you, Brian, what, what alternative would you come up with possibly? Do you have any, another idea of how to, in a perfect world, how we would do this? I mean, well, I th it's, the yeah, it's why it. it's got to go back to Finance Committee, and I think having a, a candid conversation about the way that we, we fund things, debt service consumes such a huge part of our budget, and, and it seems to me we're paying for debt that is over a much longer period of time than the lifespan of the things that we're bonding for. So it's, again, that's not for us to figure out here, but it mm -hmm. um, sure seems to me that there ought to be a, a transition at some point where every year we take back a little through the levy to help fund maintenance-related things like this. Ideally. Ideally, of course, right? this year we went that, that totally the other way around. It might be a while before that happens, but yeah. I, I mean, I think, I think I'd be more comfortable with a scenario where let's secure the city commitment first so that way we're not backpedaling on something if the council ultimately decides not to support it so i mean chris you've been down this road yeah. before yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. i mean what do you think personally i'm fine with approving it now because i know if i'm going to support it now i'm going to support it later but i sure there's 11 other people like you said and even when we had a majority before I think part of it too is looking at how the city is evolving in terms of, of the sports climate. You know, pickleball, uh, you know, we had the disc golf, that's another one too that we dealt with. I mean, they're just different things that are going on. So we're looking to the future that way. But Brian brings up some good points. You know, I think this will have to be dealt with at finance. This is just one example of one project, but we're going to have other projects come down the road as well. So I don't know. I would hate to throw this on the fire, you know, because of all that. Because I think it's a noble motion. If, if, if well, I think if they understand and we're up front, hey, we can approve you fundraising and we'd like to include this. However, that doesn't mean it's going to be yeah. very clear up front. And maybe they have an exit strategy with their donors that if the council were to not support the bond request, that they have made it clear with their, their donors yeah. how that money will be handled afterwards. Whether it's returned, it's it's put in a fund, I, I mean... Maybe they take pledges. I would advise yeah. anybody to take yeah. pledges. <laughs> so. That's actually not a bad idea. That's the way to do it. We found out. So, so do you have a proposed proceed. motion? Should we, I don't know if we would receive and place it on file until after the bond request and that would be the motion? Or would it be just to hold it until after the bond request in the spring of 2019? Well, I, I think to Chris's point, though, I think having them take pledges until 
until council has authorized the bond, mm -hmm. I think seems to be a safe practice. Yeah. So I mean, in yeah, a sense, we would collect nothing. Right. If it moves forward, they collect. Exactly. Well, then you don't want to receive a place on file. Right? No, if that's no, the case, then we would then move forward. Then, motion then I would just uh, <laughs> to approve the request by the pickleball we league to fundraise ten thousand yeah. dollars towards the cost of installing dedicated pickleball courts at Edison Park and to consider bonding the remaining amount in the spring of two thousand nineteen. And then I will have a separate conversation yeah. with the donors uh, to tell them, you know, for now just uh, accept. Um, uh, commitments, not actually dollars. Yeah, I was going to say, I'd actually make that part of the motion. We yeah. can make that part of the I would, motion. I have two things I'd make part of the motion. Yeah. One is that it, it's pledges, and the second, well, maybe I'll just make the motion. I, I would yeah. authorize, but move that we authorize uh, Packerland Pickleball. Yes. PPP. PPP. Uh, PQ <laughs> um, cool. to, uh, to gather pledges for commitment towards pickleball renovations contingent upon council authorization to bond uh, the balance and I would also add that Dan that they clearly work out an exit strategy with you for well actually the exit won't matter because it's pledges so that's my motion all right is there a second also a second discussion those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carried we work through the bond nicely done oh. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been <laughs> I mean, it's probably not here. People ready for the next one? Okay, number two, discussion with possible action on accepting a 200,000 Fox River NRDA grant for the construction of a pier at Bay Beach Amusement Park. So as you recall, earlier this spring, the city council directed park staff to apply for grants to help fund the $7 million uh, needed for the beach pier and boardwalk project at Bay Beach Amusement Park. Uh, so at the time the city council bonded five million dollars towards the project and the mayor uh, committed to fundraising one million dollars and the remaining one million dollars is to come from various grants that the city applies for uh, just recently the city was awarded two hundred thousand dollars in grant funding from the fox river green bay natural resource trustee council uh, so this is the funding that's coming from the fox river natural resource uh, damage assessment funding, which is otherwise known as an NRDA grant, and it's part of the Fox River cleanup money. Uh, so the grant, this grant application was written specifically to to fund a portion of the construction costs associated with the pier only. So the two hundred thousand would only go towards the construction of the pier. So per the city policy, uh, the Park Committee and City Council do have to formally approve accepting any grant uh, that is uh, offered to the city. So that's what I'm bringing forward. So I would recommend you uh, approve the grant. Do we want money? <laughs> uh, just so you know, this is a non-matching grant. So there are no stipulations to the funding. It wouldn't have mattered anyway in this case because we would have used the $5 million as the match to the grant. But this is a 100% 100, 100 funded grant and and the matches are not necessary. Do we know where we're at with the fundraising? I do. Um, you know, it is yeah. nearing completion. It is. But yeah. It's good. Well, Gentlemen, I'll make a motion. Sierra, you're not here to cover pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> I should have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Alderman Stoyer to approve. Second. Second by Alderman Johnson. Discussion. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Show us the money. Good job. Whoever wrote it. Was that you, Dan? Yes. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are ready for item three. Consideration with possible action on the request by Alderman Stevens on behalf of American Transmission Company to move their vegetation management clearing activities to span Finger Road from East View to Pinehurst. So in January or February, ATC will be uh, clear cutting uh, the majority of the trees within their existing power line easement uh, all the way from Finger Road uh, in Green Bay to Sturgeon Bay. Uh, so this is about a 50 mile stretch. Uh, the majority of the easements in place are 100 feet wide and I had some discussions with ATC. We do have a representative here uh, if you have questions. 
and their intent is to clear an 80 foot wide strip uh, within the 100 foot easement for the most part that may vary a little bit uh, the only parkland that is directly affected uh, for this uh, clearing would be at Edison Park. Uh, so there is an easement right through the park where there is power lines and they would be clear cutting in the park there. Uh, per their easement language, ATC is within their rights to complete this clearing effort. Uh, there will be no cost to the city or the residents to complete this work. Uh, so ATC will hire the contractor to remove the trees, grind the stumps, and restore the site accordingly. And really what they're looking at is they don't really want any trees underneath the power lines. So after talking to ATC, really the intent of this communication from Alderman Stevens uh, was really to inform the public that this work is, is occurring throughout the entire stretch of the city, not just this five block section along Finger Road. Uh, because most of the public property affected falls into the public works right-of-way um, This item probably should have been referred to INS and not parks uh, But I did speak to D Director Grenier about this. He has been aware of this project for about the past year uh, Obviously, he, he knows about it and, and he agrees that you know they're within their rights <coughs> and easements to clear the trees out of there um, you know, at this point, I would recommend that you would just receive this and place it on file. But if you do want to talk about it in more detail, INS, you might want to refer it to INS because it, it affects the right of ways more than it really does the parks. And you know, part of it too is how much public notice do you want given to the to the residents, um, and do you want public works or the parks department to play a role in getting that notice out. Now that being said, I know ATC has talked to uh, all of the residents already who are affected and they are aware that this is happening. So um, we can, if you want, you can open the floor to ATC. I'll make a motion to open the floor. Second. Motion by Alderman Stoyer, second by Alderman Johnson to open the floor. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Hello. Aye. Can I get your name and address please? Uh, Sam Hawk, 3500 Lark Road, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm a real estate representative for ATC. Um, just, and just to add a few things, you did a great job summarizing. We've been communicating with the landowners probably for a year and a half or so because it's part of our, our normal outreach to, to let them know. We're, we're basically doing a rebuild on the project from our Finger Road substation to our canal substation, which is in Sturgeon Bay. And that essentially consists of removing and replacing all the structures and, and re-engineering part of it because we have to, to come in compliance with electrical safety code and so forth. So. And that's really what the, the issues are with, within the city. You know, there's areas where um, trees have grown up considerably underneath the line, trees and transmission lines don't get along very well, so we have to go back and, and, and we're, as a publicly regulated utility, we're pushed more and more to have, I'll say, less tolerance, for lack of a better term, or, or, to, or to keep our railways clear just to maintain safety. And that's that's really where this this the genesis of this. So, is. as it affects parks, it's really just a strip along. Yeah, over. if there's a picture here that I can, if I could, sure. if I could yeah. keep that out. We do have a map of the Finger Road section, but uh, it really that that really is okay. street right of way and not parks. This is the actual only park uh, where it would be affected, and this is Edison Park. So this is in between the two ball fields. Okay. Yeah, and, and if you if you look at it, the green line is this is a, a print from our, our GIS system. The green line is basically the center line of our of our sixteen thousand volt transmission line. The blue line is the boundary of our hundred foot e easement that we have running through the, the park. And the red line is based on our engineering calcs. That's what we need to maintain for our vegetation management for safe safety of the line. So there's roughly twenty eight trees, I believe it is, that will be that need to be removed to keep that right away in compliance for our vegetation management and and as indicated we will be grinding the stumps removing the the the, the trees and the and um reseeding and and actually I, and kind of subsequent to our conversation I, I think i mentioned in my email to you um what we prefer to do if we can is is turn over the the um the restoration to the city because then if there's and, and we'll just pay whatever the costs are for that because that way if there are issues with you know the, the topsoil being reseeded and, 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 and having a professional landscaper do it versus having our contractor do it which they do good job on but 
it's still not you know to the level that it might be otherwise and, and we usually pay a stumpage fee and whatever the costs are for topsoil and labor and so forth and you know that's whatever that reasonable cost is that way the city would be managing the process and there won't be a it won't be like a three-way move which we've done in the past but it can get difficult because when you control we've always found when you control the purse strings you have a lot more control over the project and that that usually works out better for us plus we're not really built to be able to do it that way necessarily so that's that's a consideration i want to throw out there and so well. for the the edison park you would work directly with me to, to yes. see if we can work Correct. something out exactly for all exactly. of the right of ways you would work through director be Grenier because uh, the to work with him on yes and and we actually have you know and, I, and that's a conversation i'll have with him probably this week yet is um there are about three areas where we have to discuss the permitting process where we need to remove trees everything almost everything else virtually on this line is under un, un, under easement we were most of these were required in the early 50s prior to even roadways or anything being put in. I think Finger was about the only one that was in there when, at the time of this uh, project when we built. So I have a question. Uh, you have the right of way. Does that give you the power or ability just to take down whatever you want, or do you have yes. to reimburse? Yes, it does. Okay. It does. So. What, what we've done, just, just to, as yeah. kind of background, is there are some areas, like particularly along Finger Road when the line was built, they didn't actually acquire <laughs> easements from the landowners. So now we're going back because we're rebuilding land. We're actually acquiring easements and paying them for the trees we remove because it's, it's not not right away. And we're also paying for them to have the restoration process done as well. And we just think that's the fair way to handle the landowners. We want to make them as whole as we can because I mean, unfortunately, there are some areas in here which is kind of off this topic, but there are some areas that are are not going to look as good as they did before because the trees have to come down. So that's a piece that I'm looking at. It's trees obviously make a big part of what makes. A park Absolutely. attractive. Absolutely. Uh, would there be any opportunity, perhaps, to restore the trees that are being removed in another part of the park? Um, I'm not saying planting, we, you know, 50 foot tall trees. Um, it, it's certainly a topic of discussion. Typically, when it, we have the easement right away, we we don't do that. Um, but I mean, it, it's certainly something we can talk about. Um, I'm not I'm not opposed to it, so I'm not I'm not going to say no. I, I think it's certainly something we could talk about. Um, and, and like I said, at a minimum, we would commit to, to certainly stump grinding and, and restoring. Sure. But yeah. Yeah, that's certainly a topic. And I, I've, I've already talked to our project manager about that. So yeah. I think, I mean, as, as an overall cost of the total project, I think it would be yeah, a very, very, very small piece. Yeah. And I, I would love to see you just as a good community yep. gesture yeah. to and help preserve the, again, the aesthetics of the park. I think it would be a great, a great thing to do. As a matter of fact, the discussion I'm going to have with Steve Grenier is that in the areas where we are proposing in the road right away to, to do the same thing, basically. Because okay. we can't, I mean, there's a, there's a, you know, Mason Street's a boulevard, so there's, I think there's three trees that are in the boulevard of Mason Street where our line cross is coming from Finger Road that we are going to, we need to take down because they're directly under the line. So my proposal to them is we'll stump grind, we'll reseed, and we'll, we'll buy your other trees to put somewhere else that could be used for that. So. And, and visually, this will be a drastic change along the right of way and within the park from what's mm -hmm. there now. Uh, so that's why the intent of the communication was to inform the public that this is happening because you know they, they will be removing a lot of trees within the right-of-way and they will not be replanted because the right-of-way is so narrow there's no other place to plant trees. Um, so in the park there's more room to do that but in the right-of-ways there aren't. And we recently dealt with that with uh, Skyline Boulevard uh, a few years ago uh, where all of the, the trees had to be removed along Skylight Boulevard and that was you know that was an issue with the residents there and uh, you know the Parks Department received a lot of calls uh, in regards to that and you know we unfortunately had to just refer them to ATC because it's their, within their right of that easement to do that so um, but I we just wanted to let you know that the work is happening and um, or it will be happening in the near future and you may receive calls on well, I, I will say, I know you have a question, Alderman Mr. Uh, Ed, your use of a map here has endeared you to, to all this. <laughs> oh, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> We've had these discussions yeah. in the past. Mark, Mark and I go back He has a question, years. I think, for you. <laughs> right, well, thanks for coming in, Ben. Sure. Um, and I, I allude a little bit to that Skyline Boulevard situation, mm -hmm. too, because mm -hmm. I went down there with the Alder at the time, and we right. took a look at it and just tried to understand the things, and I realized that you're within your rights to, to do that, but I think Alder Johnson brings up a good point about I don't know if it would be public relations or, or what, but if, if something could be incorporated into that 
you know, just it's a thought. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and well, and believe me, you've had to deal with a lot of citizens that probably weren't all well, really I, happy. As part of my duties with ATC, I also support all of our vegetation management activities from the real estate side. So, you know, ninety-eight yeah. percent of the time, you're not making someone happy. No. You're taking trees down off the property. So and I, I, I completely understand that. <coughs> and and we that's why in, in a number of these areas, like and and I made the comment because I've got a real estate background. You know. Particularly along, I think it's Malcor Drive. Um, there were no favors done when that development was built there because they basically put the road right next to the transmission line. So inevitably, all of the houses that were developed on the north side of the road are going to lose their entire front yard, which you know is unfortunate. But <coughs> based on the, the vegetation management requirements for safety of the line, right. it, it's unavoidable. So I mean, I'm, we're looking at this stretch in Edison Park, mm -hmm. but how many other trees are we looking at? Uh, the the, the total project? number of trees that we have identified for removal are 110. And that's in the and, city. And that's within the city. And that is um, <laughs> that there, there's I think I said 28 are within the park, and then the balance of those well, are residential. Are residential. Yes. Well, uh, 110 doesn't seem like a tremendous amount. I just remember Skyline. There, there, yeah. were, there was over well, 100. Well, the unfortunate part about Skyline is we have two continuous transmission lines that cover right. basically the whole boulevard. So that was, and that, you know, when, when the, tr the lines were built oh so many years ago, the, uh, oftentimes the development. It will go around it. Yeah, it's not, not, it's not no, taken I into consideration. They, 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 sometimes they'll take, you know, they'll, they'll be nudging a little closer than they should be in. And, but that so one is was there, I mean, within that right away on Skyline, is there going to be any uh, any planting at all nearby, or is it I, within I, the eighty I, foot? You probably would I say I can't no. answer that. I yeah. would I would say probably not because right. I don't think we would have taken it down if we if we right. could, could have avoided somewhere. it. Because because sometimes we can if if um, if it's like a low growth vegetation, you know, shrubbery and some things like that, they they can allow them. Mm -hmm. um, but again, because of the stringency of the vegetation okay. management, the way we're being pushed going forward, it's makes it much tougher. Okay. Yeah. As you can imagine, like some of these developments you see there, the center line of the transmission line is in the middle of the fence line between two lots, and then there's people that will be losing trees on both sides. So. Any other questions? I think I'm the real good. question here is how is this going to affect the wind shear on the pickleball? Case? Yeah, I was trying to have that same thought. Because I was thinking, what was that plan? There will be a couple left. Bob, there, there's Bob. It, it could have an effect. <laughs> Probably a good thing you left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. Well, you brought up to close the floor. Second. Motion by Alderman Johnson, second by Alderman Stoyer to close the floor. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Now, on the original request here, I'm trying to just get a handle on it. He has to move the vegetation management clearing activities to span Finger Road from Eastview to Pinehurst. I, I think you know the the actual community. You know that was written per the communication to okay. the parks department uh, from from the alderman, and I think what what he was referring to is just it, the fact that they were going to be removing the trees along okay. that stretch. So like after I had more it. discussions <laughs> with ATC, okay. I realized it's it's a bigger issue. It's not just localized to Finger Road along this five block section. If I could, the original issue was. I think our, our floor is closed right now, but we yeah. can open back up if you want to. All motion open the floor. Second. Motion by Alderman Sawyer, second by Alderman Johnson. Sorry, those are in favor. All aye. Opposed, right. motion carried. Rules. Floor is open. The, the original intent was that there was one section of, of, or two spans basically, where during the hunting season we always try to pull all our crews for both safety and, and respect to the landowner's use of the property out of the, of the wooded areas when we're doing the vegetation management. So we thought that span would be a good area t to remove during that, that yeah. part, and it gave us a little jump start on the project. Because of the, you know, the meeting getting canceled and a couple other things going on, we, we actually pushed it off. And probably, I don't know if we would have had to now at this point, but I mean, it's, it, it's, that's, that's really what the, the, the original intent was. So All right. Thank you. So, sorry. Motion to close the floor. Motion by Steyer, Steyer. Second by Johnson to return to regular order. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, I, I would move to receive and place on file, and yeah. um, I would also add to that uh, request that Director Ditchay work with ATC representatives um, on the possibility of replanting new trees to replace those that have been lost. And I would also ask, Dan, that you work with Director Grenier uh, on the areas affected under his jurisdiction. Thank you. Right. In the park, right? Motion by Alderman Johnson. Is there a second? Just within this area, right? 
Oh, that's why I said you should want oh, to go near too. Oh, yeah. All right, I'll, I'll second I'll, by Elsa Stoyer. <coughs> I think that's a good good addition. Obviously, we can't require you, but it'd be a good public public relations thing. Twenty eight saplings, put them in. Yeah. You know, that'd be an excellent idea. Any other discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening, Spence. Say hi to Tammy mm -hmm. and the boys and the girls. <coughs> On to the best part now. Director's report. Director's report. I did hand out the, the director's report to you. I'll just touch bases on a, a few items here, some of the highlights here. So the tree pruning operations have resumed. Uh, our forestry crews have pruned South Oneida Street from West Mason to Lombardi Avenue. Uh, that is already done. Our park crews are really busy working on several outdoor projects right now before the snow comes and then we have to shift our focus to snow removal and ice rink. So it's nice that there is no snow cover right now. They are able to get out there and still get some grading projects done and some other things going on. So um, it's nice that the snow hasn't hit yet. Uh, construction began on the Ferris wheel uh, last week. So the contractor uh, did install the erosion control and they will be working on installing the pilings or the footings uh, for the Ferris wheel either this week or early next week. So progress is moving out at Bay Beach on that. Uh, the Beaver Dam ball field lighting project, a uh, sports lighting project that is nearly completed now. Um, and then Colburn Pool, uh, we are about 90% complete with the plans and specifications uh, for the pool renovations as discussed earlier this year. Uh, we hope to get that out to bid sometime in December and ideally we would be open June 1st with the renovations. Uh, currently uh, we did hire a contractor out there to mud jack the concrete floor in the women's changing area uh, to level the concrete, uh, but the concrete in the men's room wasn't, it was beyond what mud jacking could do. So uh, this week they are actually replacing the concrete in the men's changing room. Uh, our winter recreation brochure uh, it will, be, will be printed later on this week, so you'll get a chance to look at all of our recreation programs when that brochure comes out. And then we are offering indoor swim lessons at Edison Pool right now. Uh, the last thing is, uh, two, we did have two managers at Bay, from Bay Beach. Uh, they did attend the annual International Association of Amusement Parks and Attraction Seminar. So that's really, you know, a great uh, seminar for our staff out there to attend. Um, and uh, they really got a lot out of that uh, meeting. So that concludes my division report. Questions? No. Motion to receive and place on file. Motion to receive and place on file. Alderman Stoyer. Second. Second. Alderman Johnson. Discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, that's a tentative date, right, for our next park committee because we really don't need Again, as a council, to look anywhere, right? right? So Correct. We'll, That's the right. we'll take that as. Should we tell council for this? How is it a plan? Yeah. The allocation. Okay. You got any parks? Yeah, this the parks. <laughs> yeah. Put her in next week. All right. Yeah. Any other motion to adjourn? To adjourn. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Story to adjourn. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We're adjourned. Yeah. I don't think I ever, ever was in the meeting. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, I couldn't so get to the I was wondering if I might be able to grab an interview with you. Just okay. Anyway, Whenever you're free, I'm going to be the citizen at 630 at the Black Zone. So mm -hmm. One of my favorite places. Paying for another dinner? What's that? No. Paying for another dinner? <laughs> no. Whenever Mark goes there with the citizen, I'm going to get a part-time part job just to keep up with it. <laughs> going to home for coffee. And, I don't know. You have that issue, too.